good afternoon. Uh, so this is uh, joint research together with uh, Valeria Turtor and Paolo Giangiacomo. And we uh, decided to investigate this topic, which is the parental engagement and its effect on children outcomes at school, but with a more broader perspective to the attitudes of learning in, in general. And this is a, a new, new topic for us, so this is a very preliminary result. And uh, all comments and advice that you would like to, to give us at the end would be very welcome. So there is a huge amount of literature about the effects of parental engagement on, uh, on children outcomes and tons of evidence that uh, when there is this kind of engagement by families, then outcomes and performances at school are higher. And this kind of evidence has been growing up um, in the last decades using uh, data from um, international surveys like uh, OECD and EA surveys. So the aim of this research is to look at this link between uh, uh, parental engagement and uh, child uh, school performance, but also to look at some like, connected aspects such as the attitude to learning in general and uh, the feeling about uh, studying and uh, stress in front of, uh, of a task. So we, we try to, to have a broader uh, look at this topic. So starting from the, to the definition of parental involvement, um, we, we are aware that it's very ample, it's very large, and it includes uh, a lot of aspects, ranging from uh, support with homework, uh, parental school involvement, um, until uh, uh, these kind of early parent-child activities before the beginning of school. And uh, in a broader sense, also parental expectations can be uh, considered as a sort of parental engagement. All these aspects together, they um, generate this concept of parental involvement, which we know that has effects on child uh, outcomes. But what it's important to bear in mind for all the, the results interpretation and in, in this presentation is that also the child outcomes themselves, they can affect in a way uh, parental involvement because uh, there is a kind of circularity, both in negative and in positive sense. Uh, a kind of negative example is, for example, if the child decreases the performance or has some difficulties at school, then probably it will lead the parents to get uh, a higher uh, involvement in home support, for example. But also thinking about um, expectations of parents, uh, a part of expectation can be, let's say, a priori, but then mm, another important part can be shaped by the child uh, uh, outcomes at school. So for example, if I see my daughter, to not <laughs> follow the gender gap, being very good in mathematics, uh, probably my, my opinion about what she can do in, in the future will be shaped and will, can, can change from what I thought before and go in the direction of, of something that respects what she is uh, showing as abilities. So th there is this kind of endogeneity and in respect of that we decided to concentrate only on a very specific aspect of parental uh, engagement which is this so-called um, early parent-child parent activities, which are all those kind of learning activities, and, and we focus on literacy activities, which occur before the beginning of school, so before the age of six. And in this way, by definition, all these activities uh, uh, happen before the school, so there is no way that the outcomes themselves have, a, uh, have a, an effect on uh, parental involvement, and we we can have a look and in a way we, um, we encompass the problem of endogeneity in this, um, in this topic. So these are the detailed items that we, uh, on which we, we work. They are derived from uh, Pierce um, survey um, and okay, they refer to the preschool uh, period of time. So they are read books tell stories, sing songs, play with alphabet toys, talk about things you have done, talk with your child about what you have read, play word games, write letters or words, and read aloud signs and novels. Ten items, and then this is the way they are presented to parents. 
uh, the parent has to choose uh, how often this <coughs> happens with children, so um, often, sometimes, or uh, never, almost never. And then th this, this is like battery, so they are collected all together, and uh, a scale is created, but it's also created in a form of an index constructed using item response theory. So then as an index, it still has three categories, never, sometimes, and often. Uh, with this cut points, this about 6.2 uh, that defines the sometimes category and 10.7 to define the often categories. As a kind of interpretation, uh, for example, the, when we use this variable as an index, the often category, it corresponds to a parent that says that five of these nine activities happen often with, with this, his children and four of them only sometimes. So um, for the analysis, we use three uh, data sets. The, the first one is uh, the survey EA peers, referred to the year 2016. And this is a survey centered on grade four students, so the fourth year of primary school. And from this survey, we have taking this, uh, this scale, these uh, items uh, forming the scale of uh, liter uh, preschool literacy activities. And then we link this, uh, this, sur uh, this survey with Invalsi data at grade five, so the, the following year, year 2017. And uh, so this is longitudinally and retrospectively to grade two Invalsi data for the year 2014. And of course, students who have taken all the tests are the sample on which we worked. And from, from grade five, we, um, um, okay, since all the activity we look to are uh, um, related to literacy, we took then from grade five the, the skills in Italian and literacy, and from grade two, the reading skills. So this is the sample as we built it. Uh, thanks to this uh, unique code, uh, in Valsi, we could link the students uh, in the three uh, time points and build just a, a unique longitudinal data set. So the key variable is this uh, parental early literacy activity, which has been used as a scale or as an index, depending on the kind of analysis we, we made, we performed. And then we use different, um, more than one outcome variable to look at these different aspects of um, uh, student learning and, and school outcome. We use, as I said, um, grade two and grade five uh, scores and invalsi tests, but also another index uh, uh, calculated based on Pierce data, which is the like reading, like reading index uh, which is a measure of how much the student uh, likes reading at grade four. And then the confidence in reading index, of the, always from Pierce survey. And then we also selected this question from the Invalsi questionnaire, uh, referred to grade five, which asks to the student, uh, how much did you feel calm uh, during the Invalsi test? of Italian, and this is in a way, um, a way for us to explore a uh, kind of sense of uh, self-efficacy and uh, response to stressful tasks and situations. And then we use also some control variables, which were educational parents, uh, having been attending kindergar kindergarten for more than two years, and gender. Uh, we performed very uh, basic analysis just to have a preliminary look at this phenomenon and the link with, um, with outcome at school. So first of all, we just had the frequency of different specific activities, um, the, the items I showed before, among the Italian population to have a look of what is uh, most frequent and what less uh, as a kind of activity of parent with their children. Then we um, performed a comparison uh, of mean score uh, in reading and in literacy according to the level of parental activity. So basically we, we, we had a look of what was the score in reading for those students who have experienced uh, often par parent-child activities, what's the score for students who experience just sometimes or never. Um, the same way, we also made a comparison of percentages, uh, differences in percentages 
um, um, of students that declare that they like reading, or they are confident in reading, and they feel calm uh, in front of the invalsy tests, always according to the different, the three categories of uh, the exposure variable, the, the relationship, the parent-child uh, activities they have had. And as a final analysis, we will show you all this linear regression model in which, uh, more than one model actually, uh, one is with uh, this reading skills as outcome, so the, um, the ability of the child on the second year of, uh, of school um, of reading, and the, the other model has as an outcome the Italian language, so the literacy skills uh, measured on grade five, and on this model, we performed some nested, nested models. So we added uh, uh, gradually more uh, key variables to see what is the direct effect of parent-child activities, but also mediated by the, um, the propensity of the student to like reading and confidence. So we put also some uh, intermediate outcomes inside to see uh, mediation effects. So this is the first result. These are the distribution, the frequency distribution of the nine items of the parent-child uh, literacy activity scale. And pretty much all the items are frequent as activities in, uh, in families, apparently. And the most uh, frequent is uh, that one about uh, <laughs> told what you have done, uh, or, or the parents have done. And for seven over nine items, uh, the, uh, the category often, which is the blue one, is uh, the most frequent. The only two for which it, this is not true is uh, book discussion and play word games, which indeed are more, a, a bit more particular with respect of the others. Um, so based on, the, based on these nine items, um, we uh, use the Parental Early Literacy Activity Index and we had looked to its connection with uh, the students' like reading, the, the pleasure for reading of the students. As you can see here, uh, in the category of students that declare that they like very much reading, um, there are 44% of these students that come from families in which uh, it was very frequent to have parent-child literacy activities when they are only 24% that declares that they like very much reading when they come from families in which this kind of preschool activities was never performed. And this result is mirrored in the negative, uh, say negative category. So students that declare that they do not like reading at all. And they are only 12% in families where there was this parental activities, but they are double in when they come from families with no uh, parental parent-child activity in preschool. Similarly is the result about confidence in reading, which is even more pronounced, because here in the positive uh, category, students who, who declare they are very confident in reading, they are more <coughs> than half, they are 54% uh, among those who have had parental activities, and they are enough uh, for those who have not experienced that kind of activities. And that's also can be seen here. They are only 11% and they are uh, more than three times uh, uh, the students that are not confident in reading at grade four of uh, primary school uh, associated with families where they did not experience parent-child literacy, uh, preschool literacy activities. This is a bit more particular, is the, the item about uh, the level of stress and feel calm in front of the, of the test. Here the difference is not much in the extreme categories, it's more in the middle. Uh, you can see there is that zero that depends on the, the sample size of the, of the survey, which can be in this link with Invalsi data, can be um, quite simple, so there are some uh, instability of the estimation. But still, we do, we do not take this result as a precise result, but just as an indication of what, what is going on in there. And we can see that in the middle, there are very much more students that declare that are only a little uh, calm in front of a kind of task uh, if they come from, from realities where they have not experienced uh, parent-child um, uh, activities before school. So coming to quantitative uh, outcomes, 
This is the reading skills uh, in uh, second year of elementary school. And these are the scores in, uh, in reading, the normalized and balanced score. And as you can see here, it declines gradually from the category of often to that of never. These differences are all significant that uh, we tested with the ANOVA test. Um, so um, there is a kind of difference also, not here are not percentages, are just means, and there is a difference in the three categories. <coughs> if we look at the same result, so the, the mean score in uh, literacy skills in the last class of primary school, here the degree is even sharper, it's here, it goes from 208 to 186, and of course, also these differences are significant as uh, tested with the ANOVA test. So in the last part, we, we try to make some control, so to run regression models, where uh, in the first one, we decided to, to run a model on the reading skills. So the outcome was reading in grade two. And the question behind is always, do parental early literacy activity have an effect? And um, we put inside only those controls that we that we had from from the data, and that's the the coefficient we found for early literacy uh, early literacy activities on reading skills. In this kind of analysis, we use the index the, the preschool activity as a scale and not more as a, as an index. So as a number. Um, so we, we, here we see the effect of grade two, uh, control for gender and parent level of education. For grade five, we run more than one model. Basically, the idea here is that we can have the direct effect of parent-child activity on uh, grade five uh, performance, but also that there can be some mediator's effect, uh, which can be the reading ability before, already in grade two, and the confidence in reading, uh, the pleasure in reading, and they can also operate on uh, performance in grade five. And of course, this is not uh, an object of our analysis, but it would be very interesting also to look at that part. So what affects the different levels of parent-child activities. And this is the last model. Actually, there are four models, nested models. So from model one to model four, we uh, gradually added uh, new variables at the at the bottom of the table. So uh, on the top, we just have control variables. Then this is our key variable, the early literacy activities. And we see that the coefficient is decreasing because in the first model, that was the only explanatory variable linked to parent-child activity. Then in the second one, uh, we added the reading, uh, uh, reading performances grade two, and that uh, has an effect, but, uh, but still the effect of early parent-child activity remains significant. It doesn't lose significance uh, uh, in any passage. Then we add the, the variable light reading scale. That also has an effect, even if it's uh, smaller and decreases the effect of uh, our key variable, but it's still significant. It decreases to 1.16. And then the la in the last model, uh, we used, uh, alternatively, uh, we removed the light reading scale and used the, the confident in reading scale. We, don't, we, we didn't use these two scales together because they are pretty much intercorrelated. We, we, could, we couldn't use in the same model. And this one, be confident in reading, it counts even more than uh, uh, the pleasure of reading, of course, because it's really, really related to the ability, to the skill of reading. Uh, the more you are able, the more you like it, and the more you are confident, and here also there is a kind of circularity. But what is interesting for, for us as an indication is that uh, there is both a mediated effect, but also a direct effect of these kind of activities uh, on performances at school. So our findings are consistent uh, with previous, uh, pre previous studies, but we can try to give a, a magnitude uh, of these effects in the Italian context. And um, we had an indication that can be effects uh, direct to outcome uh, at school, but also uh, more general with, to the, the, the learning attitude of the student. Um, 
we, we are aware that it would be very interesting to develop the study also analyzing other kind of parental uh, involvement. And in terms of general conclusion and let's say social policy perspective, um, we think that evidence like this um, gives support to all those kind of programs and init um, yeah, initiatives that promote uh, activities and for example uh, reading is very much uh, uh, diffused um, um, even very early in, uh, in the very first uh, years of life um, this is a, uh, a slogan from one of these programs and uh, the program is Nati, Nati per Legger which is quite um, active in, in Italy and the, the, the slogan is your child will love reading because he loves you and that's the core point of parent-child en engagement because it's not just taking the, the test with, with the child or making the activity itself it's that this is mediated by the relationship and by the feeling and in all the cases where where the feeling is inside a, a learning uh, process is there that uh, uh, the child is involved the most and the results uh, are um, at, at the top. And then uh, also in the perspective of social pol um, policy and developments, it would be very interesting to have a better understanding of which parental characteristics improve and are associated with, uh, with the higher um, frequency of this kind of activities. So for example, is this related to highly educated parents and with specific kind of work conditions of mothers and fathers because maybe they can have more free time to, to dedicate to their children. And if it's so, and um, beside that, uh, it would be also important and interesting to understand uh, which obstacles uh, are uh, present. And uh, let's try to, to remove these kind of obstacles to make all the children and families, to, in the, to put them in the conditions of realize these kind of uh, activities, uh, given that they, they produce lifelong effects on education. Thank you very much. <laughs>